this word is death to me. I don't want death. I want life. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing. Go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Please remain standing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you there? Amen. We want to welcome those listening on our CD today. Amen. How many of you get the CDs and you like them and you're blessed by them? Amen. You got to get the word so you can continue to hear it over and over again. Amen. Matthew 6, verse 10. If you have it, say amen. amen. Verse number 10. This is Jesus teaching us how to pray. Uh, he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, uh, in other words, what Jesus is saying is that whatever's going on on earth has to reflect what's going on in the heavenlies. Uh, amen. One more scripture. Flip over back to Hosea. Back to Hosea. Back to Now, if you don't know what Hosea is, it's all right. Go on to the front of your Bible and l get the index to get the page number. Hosea is a very short book. Amen. Hosea is 1288 in my Bible. Amen. So if you got the New King James large print, then it's 1288. Hallelujah. If you have it, say amen. If you don't say, hold on. <laughs> Hosea chapter number three. Excuse me, chapter number four. Chapter number four. Starting at verse six. If you have it, say amen. Let's read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not because they lack faith. Not because they lack money. Not because they lack talent, but because they lack information. Ah, look what it says. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you for being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of God, I will also forget your children. The more they increase, the more they sin against me. You ever met somebody that was serving God, and as soon as they get a little money in their pocket, all of a sudden they're too good for God? Uh huh. Watch this. He says, I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity. Remember, iniquity is generational sin, generational curse. Verse 9, and it shall be like uh, people, uh, like priests. So I will punish them for their ways and repay or reward them for their deeds. For they shall eat, but never have enough. They shall commit harlotry or serve other gods, but not increase, because they have ceased obeying the Lord. Harlotry wine and new wine enslave the heart or mind. Father, speak through me now. I decrease that you might increase. Bring a word that's going to bring deliverance today to your people. We open our ears to hear clearly what the Spirit is saying to the church. Only you can speak once and say something different to everybody at the same time. Speak what your people need today in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to minister to you very quick. This is really, really a part two to last week. So if you weren't here last week, you got to get the tape so you know where I'm going. Uh, but this is, uh, I want to minister to you about this. On earth as it is in heaven. Says, Touch somebody and say, my life should look like heaven looks. L look at somebody else and say, my life should look like heaven looks. Watch this. The reason many Christians operate in defeat today is because not of what they know, but because of what they do not know. They know the creator of everything. They know the great I am. They know the Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. They know Elohim. They know El Shaddai. They know Yahweh. They know yod heh vav -Heh. Those are all names for God. They know God, but the problem is, is that that's not just enough. You, you, you didn't hear what I just said. It's one thing to know somebody. It's another thing to know everything about that somebody. Uh, uh, let me make it clear for you. God says my people are destroyed because they don't have the right information. And they know me and they call me God, but because they don't have the right information, they live beneath where I've called them and ordained that they should live. In other words, they live like the prodigal son when the mansion was over here the whole time. Are y'all still here? Are y'all still here? Uh, please understand, there must be, over this 21 days that we are fasting and consecrating, there must be a hunger for the word of God like never before. I'm here to make an announcement to you. Oprah got some good books. Dr. Phil got some good books. But there's nothing like the good book because when you get the good book, it gives you the right information to make the right changes in your life. Uh, are you understanding what I'm saying today? Please understand, there must be a hunger for God like there has never been before. 
Please understand, many of us seek stuff from God, but we really don't seek God. And so we may get stuff, but stuff never stays. That's why the Bible says when the Lord blesses, he blesses and he adds no sorrow to it. In other words, what God gives you can never be stripped from you. Except we give it up. Somebody say amen. Now I want you to look at Hosea. I'm going to move him real quick today. I'm going somewhere. Tell somebody say he's going somewhere. Hosea chapter 4, verse number 6. Look what it says. My people. Notice, it's not the world God was talking about. He said, Bible-believing, tongue-talking, spinning in the aisle saints. My people are destroyed because they don't know anything. That ain't the sad part. Look at the next line there. It says, because they have rejected knowledge. Please understand, there are two kinds of people that come to church. One, people that come and say, I'm going to get something out of this service, and I'm going to use it in my life. And so I'm going to apply what I learn because I understand I can sit and hear all day, but until I actually employ what I've been taught, nothing's going to change for me. You can go to Burger King all day long, baby, and I promise you, you will not come out looking like a Whopper. Now, you keep on in your Whoppers, you'll Whop up a little bit. Watch this. Just like going to church doesn't guarantee you victory. The Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So in other words, God says you've got to know me for yourself. Not through what the bishop said. Not through what some preacher on TV said. Not through what your mama said. But you've got to know me and the way you find me is through my word. And when you find me, you find the knowledge you need to make the difference in your life. The Bible says in Peter, Peter makes a big statement. He says God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. I talked about this on Wednesday night. You need to get the tape. And I talked about this. So in other words, everything we need, God has already provided a solution for in his book. Relationship trouble, it's in the book. Money trouble, it's in the book. Family trouble, it's in the book. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? Ain't nobody saying amen. Watch this. Look at the next part. It says, I will also reject you from being my priest. In other words, God says, if you refuse to seek after me and to study my word and to come after me in prayer and to come after me in fasting, God says, if you refuse to do that, then God says, I'll even reject you from being my priest. Now, the question is, what was the priest? The priest went to God on behalf of the people. The prophet went to the people on behalf of God. Are you still here? So in other words, God says, if you reject my knowledge, I will reject you from coming to me. So you will pray, but it will never pierce the heavenlies. I will never hear it. It will never get to me because it got stuck in that second heaven I was talking about last week. It gets stuck. And so many of us are stuck in life and we wonder why. And God says, you're praying, but I'm not going to do anything until you seek me. Ain't nobody saying nothing right through there. Ain't nobody saying nothing. Look at what he says. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, and I will also forget your children. In other words, God says, what you're doing now will affect generations far after you. Oh, but is it somebody glad for his grace that even though you may have made some mistakes, that his grace is, I wish somebody would shout right there, even though I rejected some knowledge, his grace is still going to cover me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says this. The more they increase, the more they sinned against me. In other words, people sought stuff, but they lost him. Ah, you missed it. Just like in dating, if you date somebody, ooh, girl, he got a Benz. Ooh, girl, he got a house. Ooh, girl, he do this. Ooh, he take care of his kids. Ooh, he do this. He do all that. And you are attracted to something because of stuff. You may get the stuff, but you will never get the person. So many of us seek God for his hand, but we never go and get on our face and say, God, I need you to show up in my life like never before. I need to see you, God. I've got to see your face. Watch this. His face is his impartation of his revelation, which comes through his word. Y'all think I'm a rapper if I didn't say that to you. Watch this. He says, the more they got stuff, the more they sinned against me. Look what he says. I will change their glory into shame. In other words, what you are prideful about, God says he'll use it against you. Ah! 
In other words, if you exalt your children above everybody else's children, well, look at so-and-so, they so perfect, and look at so-and-so, they get this, and they do this. God says, I will use the thing that you get pride in your heart about against you. If you're prideful because you got a big bank account, God says, keep on living, baby, because if that's where your focus is, one day is going to come where you got a little NSF going on. Tell somebody, say, don't get prideful about it. Everything you got, God gave it to you. <laughs> Everything I got, God gave it to me. It ain't because I was so smart and knew all this. It was because God's grace. Somebody say God's grace. Watch this. He says, they eat up the sin of my people. They set their heart on their iniquity. In other words, God says they get stuck. And they get stuck in the same place. Every time. Uh, when it snows sometimes, when I'm backing up out of my garage, when it snows sometimes, there, there are, the snow sometimes accumulates right behind my garage. And one of the things that happens is that sometimes my tires will spin because the snow, you know, y'all know how I do here, and the snow, and the snow gets up. And so what ends up happening is that when I'm backing out, I can't back out and I get stuck. But I always get stuck in the same place. And so even though it's a new day, I find myself getting stuck with the same stuff I got stuck with yesterday. Oh, I'm preaching and ain't nobody saying nothing. What is it in your life that every year, every time you get stuck in that same place? There are people that have wasted years of their life getting stuck. You didn't hear what I just said. We get stuck in bad relationships, stuck in bad cycles, stuck in all this kind of stuff. And God says they get stuck because they focus on iniquity, generational stuff. It got their daddy, and so it'll get them, and then it's setting itself up to get their son. Are y'all here? Are y'all here? Somebody say, I'm going to get free today. Tell somebody, say, I'm going to get free today. Watch this. And he says, and it should be like people like priests. So I was punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. They shall eat but not have enough. In other words, God says, all they shall have is what I was talking about last week, is just enough. Their life will be on that perpetual drip I was talked about last week, but they will never see the overflow in their life because they've not set themselves to change. They get stuck, and the devil knows all I got to do is get them offended again. All I got to do is get them mad at somebody, and they'll continue to get stuck, and he can stop your progress. Oh, are y'all here? Are y'all here? See, it's just like that woman that always gets ready to leave, and then the man knows, well, I know she ain't really going to leave, because if I say this, that, and the other, she'll stay. That's too real. Baby, you know I love you. I ain't never going to do it again. Come on, baby, let's, let's chill. Let's just let's chill. Some of y'all laughing. You got the CD in your car. Don't play with me. And so the enemy knows that always gets them stuck. And so if that gets them stuck, they will never move into what I've ordained for them. They will always live just getting by. They'll eat, but they'll never have enough. Who am I preaching to? Look what he says. He says, they shall commit harlotry, but not in Christ. And look why. He says, this happens because they have ceased obeying the Lord. Listen to me. The blessing stops when your obedience does. But please, please watch this. Uh, somebody bring me, a, uh, bring me a coat or an umbrella or something like that. God says the blessing stops the moment you stop obeying what I told you to do. C come here, come here. And now put your coat on. I know it's hot. Put your coat on. Okay, now, okay, now close it up. This coat represents the blessing. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Now watch this. God says as long as you're obedient to me, I cover you. Nobody will ever know what's really going on. You don't have to worry about folks finding out what you did and how you did it and who you did. God says, as long as you obey me, I'll cover you. He says, so even when you step out into the storm, I'll cover you. Even when you're fighting devils on your job, I'll cover you. Even when you're fighting the IRS, I'll cover you. Watch this. But God says, the moment you do your own thing, he says, now you're exposed. And so now anything that comes against you, it'll hit you. Bring me some water. Bring me some water. Bring me some water. Now put the coat back on. Open the water. Come on. Now what? That's waterproof, right? I'll get you a new one if it ain't. All right. I'm going to put it on layaway. I'll put some on it. As long as he's obedient to God, when the water hits, look at it. It rolls right off. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord shall. 
but now take the coat off. But the moment my obedience stops, now I'm going to get you wet. Just, just pray about it. Turn around so the people can see it. Now it sits in. You miss that. In other words, while I'm obedient to what God tells me to do, anything I do, even if I make a wrong turn, I still got my coat on. So as long as I got my coat on, I'm covered. But the moment my obedience stops, I'm exposed. Watch this. Watch this. That is why the enemy, he tries to get us from not knowing because we can't obey what we don't know, but what we don't know can kill us. Watch this. I taught you last week. I taught you last week about the three heavens. I told you last week that the third heaven is where God dwells. Uh, that comes from 2 Corinthians 12, 2. Paul talks about being caught up into the third heaven. The thro- third heaven is the throne room of God. I told you last week the second heaven, that is the air. That's where the principalities dwell. When Satan was cast out of heaven, that's where he was cast to. The Bible says he's the God of the world system, God of the air, God of the airwaves. That, please understand, in the second heaven, that's where principalities over regions dwell. Okay, let me, let me make sure we understand this. In other words, in that second heaven, that's the demon that says San Francisco is plagued with homosexuality. I didn't get nobody to say nothing. In that second heaven, that's where the principality says, I know I've always got Khalil through doing this, so I'll get him through it again. You, you, you didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I just said. In the spirit realm, the organization works like this. There is a principality over a region, but for every region, there are spirits that are assigned to your life to stop your productivity. That is the reason why if you look back over your life, you will find that there has always been the same kind of attack that has always come against you. It may have showed up in a different suit, but baby, it was the same man. Y'all, okay, my sis. And then the first heaven, I gotta move on. The first heaven is the earth where we dwell. Heaven really means abode. It means a place of existence. And so the first heaven is where we dwell. So you got it. Third heaven is where God's throne is. Second heaven is where the principalities are. First heaven is where we live. Now all that's in the scripture, gotta come to Bible study so I can teach you the rest. Now watch this. And get the tape from last week. Now watch this. When we pray, the prayers travel through the second heaven. But in the second heaven, that's where our enemy, Satan, or his Hebrew name, Hasatan, which means the adversary, that's where he dwells. And one third of the angelic hosts that were cast down with him. So when I pray, my prayer leaves the first heaven, but you can't skip a step. It goes through the second heaven. What's the problem with that? The enemy knows what you pray. Okay, let me make it plain for you. Lord, if you send me a man, six fold, six pack, six figure, six, this, all that. <laughs> then it's on, Lord. And so on Monday, the enemy heard your prayer. So on Monday, he sent somebody to walk in your job. Six figure, six pack, six, all that. Six feet tall, all that. Watch this. And you think it was from God. But when your prayers went up, not only did God hear you, but so did the principality hear you. You didn't hear what I just said. So it manifests itself in the form of an enemy. Let me prove it to you. In the Old Testament, study the scriptures. I'm a doctor now, so I know the scriptures. Amen. I'm just messing. I'm messing with you. In the scriptures, if you study the scripture, uh, the term devil does not appear into the New Testament. And the term devil appears in the New Testament because the Greeks, uh, the, the Jews that were trying to get the Greeks to understand the word of God, they, they took something from Greek mythology and put it in the Bible in order to make the Greeks understand it. Are you still here? There was never God versus the devil in the Old Testament. It only became God versus the devil because in Greek mythology they had Zeus and the God of the underworld. So when the teachers and the apostles were trying to get the Greeks to understand the word of God, what they did is said, they're not going to understand only one God. They've got to think that there's a God of heaven and then there's a God of the underworld. And so we stomp on the devil, stomp on the devil. He ain't down there.
Can I teach you? I, I got to teach you. I got to teach you. I can't leave you. I got to teach you. Watch this. Can I teach you? Can I teach you? When we pray, God hears us and answers us. Please understand this. Satan stands to oppose the manifestation of what we pray for. I'm coming back to that in just a moment. Understand this. Real spiritual warfare is not fighting demons. Jesus didn't fight no demon. Come on here. Get out. He spoke to it because he had authority over it. And so you got people today that say, oh, I'm in spiritual warfare and I'm fighting demons. No, you're not. Real spiritual warfare is through prayer and through fasting because real spiritual warfare moves God. You didn't hear what I just said. Watch this. Watch this. Real spiritual warfare is can I endure my family stabbing me in the back? That's real spiritual warfare. Real spiritual warfare is can I look in those people's faces that I know been talking about me and say, hello, God bless you. Good morning. That's real warfare. Somebody say real warfare. Watch this. There is a Greek term. Write it down. Ha-Satan. H-A, Satan. H-A-S-A-T-A-N. It is a title for an angel. Are you here? I'm teaching you something you've not heard before. That's why you need to get last week's tape because you'll be missing some building blocks to get here. It is a title. There are not two gods. And you say, Bishop, I know that. No, the church doesn't. Because 90% of what we preach is spending time on the devil. And the enemy says, I know how to deceive them. I'll make them think I've actually got some power. I'll make them think that it's actually me they're dealing with. And that's how I'll deceive them. There is one God. Somebody say one God. Stay with me because I'm about to fix it up for you. I'm about to fix it up for you. Connect the dots and then we'll go home and then you can eat your nice fruit, uh, fruit medley. Satan deceives through ignorance of the word. Uh, please understand, there is not God versus the devil. That is a pagan concept that comes from Greek mythology, and it is not in this book. And then you'll say, well, Bishop, doesn't the Bible say in Isaiah 14 that Lucifer fell from heaven? He's talking about the king of Babylon. Read it. Doesn't in Ezekiel 28, doesn't it talk about the fact that God did the, the He's talking about the king of Tyr. Are y'all here? Okay, let me prove this to you. Because if we don't know who the enemy really is, we will fight amiss. And that's why Christians are stressed out and broke and tired and always going through. Because they're fighting a battle, but it's the wrong battle. They're fighting an enemy that's not even there. Uh, are y'all here? Satan, ha Satan, which means the adversary, was a title God gave to an angel. Are you still here? I'm, I'm going to show you descriptions in just a moment. What ended up happening is that Satan is not God's enemy. He is our enemy. Come on, somebody, somebody stay with me. Are you here? Are you here? Satan it's not an enemy to God. How do you know that? Read the book of Job. The Bible says that the sons of God gathered together for a heavenly board meeting. Now, if Satan was God's enemy, why were they meeting together? And not only that, but Satan didn't suggest to Job. God said to Satan, Satan, where do you come from? He says, I've been walking around the earth trying to seek somebody, trying to devour something, trying to mess something up. And he says, God says to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? In other words, God volunteered Job for trouble. That's deep. That's deep. Because you think every storm you go through, the devil's doing it. I'm here to make an announcement to you that a lot of what we go through, God is trying to get us to another place in him. I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to fix it up. You still here? You still here? Sit, watch this. He, he, Satan, watch this. I'm about to say something that's about to blow your mind, and I need you to, I need you to stay with me. Satan works for God. Amen. Now, some of y'all are saying, no, I've always been taught it's the devil. It ain't in the book. Let me teach it to you. Let me teach it to you. Are you here? Go to Isaiah 45. Go to Isaiah 45. Woo, I'm about to drop this like it's. Are you, in, are you in Isaiah 45? Are you in Isaiah 45? Satan desires our worship so that we don't focus on God. Are you here? 
And how do we worship him? We worship him through glorifying what we think he's doing. Okay, you ever talk to somebody and their report isn't my God is able. Their report is the devil so is busy. And they are agreeing with an enemy. You didn't hear what I just said. Uh, and you talk to people that are supposed to have the love of God and they're meaner than a junkyard dog. What's going on? Somebody tell me what's going on. Isaiah 45, verse 4, are you there? Verse 4, for Jacob, my servant, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by name. In other words, God says, I will call you out of your mess by your name to save you, sanctify you, and make you somebody. Watch this. Watch this. I have named you though you have not known me. Look what it says. I am the Lord and there is no other. I says, there is no God besides me. I will guard you though you've not known me. In other words, God says, even in our ignorance, he'll cover us. Even in our ignorance, he'll protect us. Even when you know you're making the wrong decision, God says, I look at what they're doing, but I'm going to cover them. Are you here? Watch this. Then they may know from the rising of the sun to a setting that there is none besides me. Watch this, watch this. In other words, I am the Lord and there is no other. Here's the verse right here, here's the drop. I form the light. Some definitions in the Amplified says, I form the good and create the darkness or the evil. I make peace and create calamity. Look at it. I, the Lord, do all these things. You, you know, you, you didn't get that. You didn't get that. He didn't say. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I got to go so Watch this. He says, whatever's going on in your life, not only did I permit it, I created it. You, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Stay with me. I am, God is not against you. He's for you. And because he's for you, he says, I will chastise those that I love. Oh, come on. Do y'all have this today? I need to make sure we get it. Oh, because we've been fighting the wrong enemy church, and that's why we've not been seeing any results. We've been fighting an enemy that we don't understand, and that's why we don't see any results. Anybody ever been in Vietnam or war? You're a soldier. You're a veteran. Wait, baby. We got some. Watch this. If you fight the wrong people, you will lose. If American soldiers shoot American soldiers, the American will lose. Okay, watch this. That is why the church is so divided today because the church has been fighting itself, not understanding that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Now, I know you've never heard this before. Let's look at verse 7 again. God says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and I create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Okay, let me break it down to you. Can I break it down to you? Watch this. We cannot effectively fight an enemy when we're misinformed to who he is. So here's how it works. Our prayers go up. They travel through that second heaven. Satan tries to manifest opposition to you. It gets to God's ear in the third heaven. Are you here? Are you here? It gets to God's ear in the third heaven. In that third heaven, God then answers you immediately. Somebody say immediately. That's why Jesus prayed, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because in heaven, there is no lag time between prayer and answer. Oh, you missed what I just said. On earth, we wait to see the manifestation. But when I'm in heaven, I pray, and God immediately does it. Watch this. So the problem we're experiencing is that most of us have resorted to living by a carnal system. Okay. Are y'all still here? So here's what happens in the Bible. Flip over to Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. This is a little bit after, after this. I'm about to show this to you. It's going to blow your mind. It's in the Bible. You can read it. I've given you all the scriptures on, on, on the tape. You can take the whole tape home and read it. Are you here? Watch this. Zechariah 3 and 1. Are you there? It's page 1354 in my Bible. Are you there? Come on, y'all. Let me know something. You there? 
All right, watch this. Zechariah 3 and 1. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel. Whenever angel is capitalized in scripture, it's referring to Christ before he manifested. Standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan. If you look at your point, you should have a point there. It says the adversary standing at his right hand to oppose him. I says, and the Lord said to Satan, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? In other words, in other words, God says, I'm ready to use somebody that other people don't think should be used. I'm ready to promote somebody that other people don't think should be promoted. I'm ready to use somebody that everybody else says can't be used. I'm ready to lose somebody, use somebody with a jacked up past. I'm getting ready to use somebody that's been molested. I'm getting ready to use somebody that's been in jail. I'm getting ready to use somebody that the world says shouldn't be used. And then Satan stands up to God and he says, objection, your honor. They're not qualified. They shouldn't be blessed, God, because they've not kept your word. And what's truthful about that is that's the truth. <laughs> verse, verse 3. Uh, verse 2, I want you to look at it again. And, but the Lord said to Satan, Satan, your objection is overruled. I taught you about how, how it works. God is the judge. He sits on the throne. Jesus is the Christ. He's making intercession for you. He's praying for you. He's your defense attorney. So when the judge says, how do you plead? I plead the blood. The blood makes me whiter than snow. Then the prosecuting attorney stands up and he says, Objection. They don't deserve to be free. They don't deserve to be blessed. They don't deserve to have anything. Then the Lord says to Satan, Satan, that may be true, but I'm God. And I will do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it. So Satan, the Lord, rebukes you. Uh, in other words, your objection to their manifestation has been overruled. You didn't hear what I just said. There's stuff that you've been praying for for years that has never manifested because it got caught up. By Satan opposing you. You didn't hear what I just said. And that's why fasting and prayer is so important. Because it turns God. And 21 days of prayer. God interrupts heaven. And he says what are they doing down here? What do I need to do to get them some breakthrough? What do I need to do to get them? God loves you. Do you understand that? God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. God wants you to be the head and not the tail. Why would he tell you all these promises if he didn't want you to have them? That's kind of mean. Watch this. Are you here? I'm through. Watch this. And then look what God says. He's talking about Joshua. Joshua, say, say Joshua represents me. You're talking about yourself. Then look at this, verse 3. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. In other words, Joshua stood before God disqualified because he kept messing up. Anybody ever felt like you made too many mistakes that God can't love you? That you made too many mistakes? Oh, it's too late now. I can't do it. I filed bankruptcy. My life is over. God says, you stand before me with filthy garments. But look at verse 4. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying this. Take away their disqualification. Take away their filthy garments. And to him he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you, not with any old robe, but with a rich robe. You, you missed what I just said. You missed what I just said. You missed what I just said. Look at it. Look at it. Verse 5. He says, and I uh, let them put a clean turban on his head. A turban represented a crown. He said, let me fulfill Revelations 1-6. Let me crown them. Jesus. On his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying, thus says the Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts means the Lord who battles for you. If you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my command, then you shall be judge in my house or priest in my house. And likewise have charge over my courts. In other words, God says you will be in heaven while you're on earth.
I will give you places to walk. See, God will take you somewhere. If they, please understand, you were never meant to fit in with the crowd. So God will take you to a place to where he says, I'll create something for you. They'll make a job for you. They'll make a position for you. They'll Hear, old Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for you are a wondrous sign. God says, I'll use you as a wonder. People will wonder how. You ever looked at somebody and looked at how their life was blessed and said, that's ridiculous. God says, I'll bless you ridiculously. So that when everybody looks at you, it's a wonder in their mind. Weren't they just broke five months ago? How did... Wasn't their family jacked up a few months ago? How did this happen? It's a wonder. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon the stone are seven eyes. In other words, there is completion. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord who does battle for us, and I will remove the iniquity. In other words, God says, I will remove all of your junk. Anybody got some junk? Anybody got a U-Haul that's behind your car that can't nobody see and you brought it with you and I'm here to let you know, don't you take that mess back with you after you leave out of this house? Watch this. He says, see, I will remove the iniquity of your whole land in one day. Y'all don't know when to shout. Y'all don't know when to shout. This is in black and white. This is the Lord talking. He says, look at it, it's in quotes. He says, and I will remove the iniquity, the generational sin. Watch this. I will remove what keeps blocking you. Yeah, you didn't hear what I just said. I will remove the mindset that says you have to be in an abusive relationship. I will remove the mindset that says you got to be jacked up and messed up. I will remove the mindset that says you'll be just like your dad. I will remove that mindset in one day. That's a mighty good place to shout right there. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, watch this, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. What that mean? It means God says, in one day, I will revolutionize your life. This ain't hype. This is the book. He says, in one day, I will revolutionize your life so that you stop thinking the way you think. We are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. A knowledge is a product of how we think. Knowledge determines how we think. See, if you, read a, if you heard a weather report on Saturday that says it was going to be a blizzard today, you would have came out with a parka and snow boots. Because what you were taught affects how you think. So that's why we've got to understand that there is one God, and that God is the Lord of hosts that does battle for us. And when Satan stands to oppose your breakthrough, God says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Get up out the way. Watch this. That's mighty good preaching. Even if I'm doing it, that's good. That's, the Holy Ghost is doing it. Watch this. Watch this. God says, in one day, I will remove it all. And look at what he says. He says, and then everybody's going to say to their neighbor, let's go look over there at their life. And now let's just look over there. Let's go camp under some trees. Okay. So you don't understand. All the hell you've been through? You better learn how to make the enemy pay for what he puts you through. You know how you make him pay for it? You become successful in spite of it. You've been in an abusive relationship, you make him pay for it. How do I make him pay for it? Success. How do I make him pay for it? We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb. You, you, you didn't hear what I just said. Touch somebody say, I got a testimony. Tell somebody, say, I got a testimony. So Jesus says, I'm through. Pray like this. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, the answer immediately comes. There is no delay. We pray. And see, that's another reason why you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if we, if we have the Holy Spirit, when we pray in our prayer language, the enemy can't understand that. So it skips the second heaven. And it goes right to God's ear. So the enemy doesn't know what to do against you when, you've got, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you here? Watch this. Some people don't need a process. They've been processing for 20 years. 
They've been processing for the last 30 years of their life. They move forward, but they never see any progress. Paradox. They think they're moving forward. To just find that they were really walking around the same place. I says, I says, are you here? Are you here? If his will is done on earth as it is in heaven, when I'm on this 21-day fast, when I pray, there is no delay. Watch this. Watch this. Because in heaven, the answer materializes and manifests immediately. God, okay, we missed it. We missed it. Your will be done on earth, verse 7, as it is in your throne room. In your throne room, I don't have to bind and rebuke the devil because he's not there anymore. Watch this. Because I got to a place in my faith to where I don't have to bind and rebuke nothing because the Lord rebuked him for me. And so when I walk into a situation, the devil has already been moved out of the way. So when I walk in there, I'm walking into a, you ought to shout. I'm walking into a place of manifested destiny. In other words, I'm walking into conditions like the Garden of Eden. I'm walking in conditions to where if I sow today, I don't have to wait a week to get it back. It immediately comes back to me. And somebody, I need to prophesy to you, somebody, you sowed something today that you didn't really think you had. And God says, before this day is over, watch it. What? What's this? What's this? Somebody say, Lord, your will on earth as in heaven. God restored Joshua back to the priesthood. In other words, God says, Joshua, you can now come to me again. See, that is the reason why. Please say, you don't need a medium to get to God. You don't have to confess to somebody else to get to God. You don't need the bishop to get to God. You, God says, in one day, I'll restore you back to me so you can come in boldly to the throne of grace. I'm, I, I, I'm through. Watch this, watch this, watch this. What is heaven like? Joy. Peace. What's this? No mess. I promise you, there ain't no mess going on in heaven. Uh, I promise you, the family ain't tripping in heaven. I promise you that. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Woo. God, you deserve the good life. And what the enemy does is he makes you think. That because you're standing in filthy clothes, that you don't deserve the good life. I've been teaching about life and purpose. I've been teaching about the get the taste. I've been teaching. Watch this. You deserve it. Not because of what you've done, but because of what he did. And when he went on that cross and was crucified, everything I'd ever do. He took it from me. Every sin I'd ever commit, it was on his back. Every lie you've ever told, it's on his back. Everything you've ever stole, it's on his back. He took the punishment, so you don't have to take the punishment. The devil is a liar. Watch this. Jesus said, in one day, baby, that's all I need. In one day, everything can change. Watch this. Here's the condition. Here's the condition. If you let go of what's familiar. What would have been interesting about that scripture if the Lord said, Joshua, give me your dirty robes and let me put some new robes. But Joshua said, no. And you know what a lot of us do? I'm through. What a lot of us do, what a lot of us do is God says, I'm trying to take from you yesterday. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. God says, I'm trying to take your low self-esteem away from you. I'm trying to take your bad self-image away from you. I'm trying to take your junk away from you, but most of us are so comfortable living in it that when he tries to take it, we refuse to let it go. You didn't hear what I just said. You, you didn't hear what I just said. What did we read first today? God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Why? Because they've rejected it. 
hear me, hear me, I'm through, hear me, hear me. God is saying to many of you today, and some of you are fasting, some of you ain't fasting. God is saying this to you. Uh, and if you ain't fasting, you can jump on in with us. That's all right. Watch this. God is saying to you today, he's saying, this day, I want to take it from you. Today's the seventh day of the fast. <laughs> Seven represents completion. Watch this. Perfection. Yeah, it's about to just be Holy Ghost falling all in this place in a minute. God says, I'm trying to take your stuff from you. You know the thing about Job? God says, Job, if, if you lose everything you got, don't worry about it because I, I, I set you up to give you double anyhow. And if you would have kept what you had, you wouldn't have had room for double. And so some of you need to stop crying about what you lost. Stop crying about your credit got messed up. Stop crying about you ain't got no furniture. No more. Stop crying about that because God says the only way I could have got Job double was that I had to get rid of the stuff that he currently had. Because what he had was married to yesterday. And God is saying to us today, it's the seventh day. I says. It is time for you to walk in what I've ordained for you to walk in. It is time for no more mess in your life. Now, Bishop, what are you trying to say? I'm not promising you that it's going to be tiptoeing through the tulips. I ain't promising you that. Because from every level that we go to in glory, there's a crisis in between each level. But there's some stuff, y'all, that we've been married to. We've been married to some stuff. I told y'all this week I, I suffered uh, a great betrayal this week. And I immediately, I told y'all Wednesday night, remember I told y'all, I said I got angry. I, I got filled with rage. And the Lord spoke this word to me. He said, son, let it die. He said, and how do you know you've let it die? Because you don't talk to dead stuff. Watch this, watch this, watch this, I'm through, watch this. Young people coming back in, we're going to pray and we'll be gone. Watch this. God says to us today, church, his will be done in your life, in heaven, as it is. Y'all still here? As it is. Or excuse me. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, you know how heaven works? Whatever the king says goes. Some of us are tired because we've been fighting and we've been fighting and not winning and we've not been winning because we were never supposed to fight. You're fighting to get ahead in life and it seems like it's not working because God said, I never told you to fight. I told you to receive your new robes. Now, you didn't get that. Sometimes we think we got to do everything when God many times says, all you got to do is show up and I'll put the right stuff in your place. Everybody stand on your feet. Everybody stand on your feet. Watch this. Watch this. I'm through. Watch this. Watch this. God says to us today, one day I can change your thinking. What is it that you always allow? And I've said this before, but I feel it in the spirit. It's dropped in my spirit. What is it that we always allow to stop us? What is it? What is it that God tries to take from us? But we're so used to it, we hold on to it. And the danger with holding on to something spoiled is that if you eat it, it'll kill you. I read a story not too long ago about a woman who drank some old cough syrup. She was sick. So she drank what she knew to drink. She drank what she was familiar with, but she didn't turn around the bottle and look to see that it was expired. When she drank that, it burned her esophagus. Watch this. There's stuff. You know why you're so mad at some people? It's because you've been drinking outdated stuff. You've been drinking what they did to you 20 years ago. You've been drinking what didn't work for you last year. You've been drinking all this outdated stuff, and it's burning up your esophagus, so now you're filled with rage and you're filled with anger, and now you've got all these questions, and God is saying, I don't want to talk about all that. Because in one day, I'll take all of that and give you something you knew not of. Watch this. Every hand lifted, every eye closed. Father, today, 
on this seventh day as we're fasting. Your grace has come into our lives. And it's come to interrupt what we're familiar with. It's come to interrupt iniquity. It has come to interrupt foolishness. And one day your word says you changed everything in Joshua's life. One day he was poor. The very next day he had rich robes. One day he was full of guilt from what he did and didn't do. And the very next day that guilt was gone. He didn't need no 12-step plan. He didn't need no five steps to hunger, five steps to health. He didn't need all that. He just needed an encounter with you. And he had to be brave enough to say, I let go of what I know. Like, Abram, I'm going to leave what I'm comfortable with to go after something I've never seen before. And that's where the battle comes in. Father, I pray victory in the lives of your people. Father, Satan is a defeated foe. You've already rebuked him in our lives. Father, we realize that you use him many times as an instrument to accomplish your will in our life. Job couldn't have got doubled unless you allowed Satan to take his current state. Father, we are the head and not the tail. Father, we are above and not beneath. We are obedient to your word. Thank you for tuning in to today's life-giving message. Harvest exists to change lives by leading people to totally love God, love people, and love life as one church in global locations. And if you have a testimony of how Harvest has changed your life, let us know on our website contact us page. We're able to continue to change lives because of the faithful giving of people just like you. And if you'd like to contribute to Harvest financially, you can do so today online at www.harvestcc.me. Remember to love God, love people and love life.